Hello there. Um, I thought I'd talk about a 3D printer today. This is, um, for those that you don't know, is an uh, anacubic Chiron. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, um, give my thoughts on it, and also I've got to try and repair it because one thing with these Chiron printers. Um, sort of by going on the internet um, the heat beds do pack up and I've had a lot of problems with this one um, the actual printer itself um, because of such a large table it's very very difficult to get this perfectly level um, it comes with a self leveling program which forget is rubbish just don't even bother um, you know the best way is to set it up manually um, but it does take you know quite a while um, so be aware of that when you buy buy one of these um, you think oh good I'm going to try and print something but it, it, it can take you a day to set it up so you know be uh, sort of weary of that um, now the problem I've got is as I said the heat bed isn't heating up and um, obviously on a 3D printer this glass bed heats up which aids adhesion to what you're printing on and that's you know that's really important um, especially if you're using different types of filament um, I've never able been able to get ABS to print properly on this. It just don't matter what I try, it just doesn't seem to like it. Um, so, but basically, I, I use a lot of uh, PLA filament, so you know it's not too much of a problem really. Anyway, I'm going to try and tip this on its side, um, and then we'll have a look, uh, have a look at getting into the actual box where the electrics are. I'll come back. Okay, I've uh, tipped it on its side, and um, as you can see, and now what I've got to do is the power cable to the heated table. If I pull this just around here, I don't know if you're going to see that, but that, that's the cable that goes to the heated table. Um, now, for some reason, that cable doesn't seem to be supplying the table. Um, I have replaced um, the solder joint because the first time it happened, the actual cable had got so hot and where it had been going backwards and forwards, it had just snapped in half. Um, so I'm suspecting that even though it's connected, there might be a break somewhere in the cable. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plate off and I'm going to get my AVO and do a quick uh, continuity test and see if we've got got a continuity from here up, up to the actual connection. So I'll just do that. Oh. Probably another one I've just lost and thrown away. Never mind. Never mind, I'm always losing things and dropping things. It's uh, just one of those things. Uh, no point getting ratty about it. Okay, one more. Okay. Right, so we can see the board for the heated bed. Um, it doesn't appear, it's just two transistors on the back, really. 
Um, so, okay. What I'll have to do is, where is the output? This is the output, okay. That output goes to there, does it? Oh, right, yeah, okay. Do 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 do. Right, red plus with black. So if I do a continuity test by putting my probe on there and my probe on the live here, we should hear a little bleep. Um, we will see. You'll hear that hopefully. So we've got one end on the positive of the wire and we've got a bleep okay so let's do the negative wire right okay that's not so good because that means that the actual cable is fine so something else has gonna miss oh yeah okay I suppose the next thing we should do would be to um, plug some power into it switch it on and then we can meet the power um, it could be even the power supply that's not supplying the voltage to that so what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll change the multimeter and then what we'll do is we can we can check what's coming in here which obviously you know will be um well it might not be it could be 24 volts it, it could be 240 i suspect it'll be 240. um for one we've got 240 coming in there we should have when i switch on the heated bed we should have 240 coming here um, and I've got a nasty suspicion that we're not going to have so I'll just set me multimeter batteries hanging out but never mind it still works fine so we'll set that to 200 we'll do it right I'll just have to get a lead and uh, plug it in Okay, I've just uh, connected the mains, so what I'm going to do now is just switch it on to try and get a metre reading. It'll do its thing, so we'll see if we've got any voltage, which we have. Okay. I'll leave that on there. So we shouldn't have any voltage coming from there yet because we've not switched it on, which is correct. So I'm going to somehow <laughs> I'm not quite sure what we can do from here. Tools. Turn up to we'll turn the bed temperature up to 60. Now I don't know if you can see, it's a bit awkward than that. Um we should now have power coming through these two bottom wires. Um obviously to heat the bed up. So and as I suspected, nothing. Not a sausage. C 
So, I would ascertain that either these transistors have blown. I uh, can't see anything. Anything else? Ooh. Is there a fuse? There's a fuse there that goes into a small power block. Uh, two four different coming into there. Yeah. Nothing. No sausage. Okay, well, the verdict is, I'm thinking this board has um, blown the transistor or something to that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this board out and guess either see if I can get a transistor and solder some new transistors in I might even have some or buy a complete new um, board which is a bit of a pain now this printer has done I've had it probably about eight months now and it's done a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's probably printed 500 hours. And once, you know, don't be put off by any of this because I've got an Ender uh, Pro 3 as well. And, you know, to get that printing even properly, I had to um, put some smoother circuits on the stepper motors, little, little adjustments. It, they work basically out of the box but if you want to get some good results you need to fine tune them um, this is just an um, I should have it's probably probably my own fault I should have looked at it when it first started but I just I just carried on using it because I needed to do some printing and hoped it wouldn't switch off on a couple of times it did um, but yeah, so it's a bit of a pain, but you know, once you do get these printers set up, um, especially this one, it, it never seems to go out of adjustment. Um, once you've got that bed dead flat, it just, yeah, I mean, it, it does do some pretty amazing prints. So, um, you know, don't be put off by it. It's, it's a very good printer and it's got a large format it does 400 by 400 by 450 up um so you can you know really print some big stuff on it and uh, you'll see that later on the channel when we start printing other bits and bobs um as projects so what i'll do is i'll end this one here i will have a look on amazon and ebay or whatever and uh see what i can come up with and I might even take this out and just test these um, transistors, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, that'll do for now, and I'll speak soon. Bye now.